Connie Erickson and I'm a clay artist and I've been working in clay for probably about 40, over 40 years. It's been a exciting medium for me since I was in high school. For the last 11 years I've been teaching at Westminster College and I, I enjoy teaching quite a bit. I build very large pieces, hand-built pieces mainly, with a pinch and coil technique. As I'm building my, my pieces, I add coils, flattened coils that I add to the top. It's a very slow technique, and so I can you know, really watch the pieces grow and make decisions along the way. And I do some sketching, but mainly it's just I keep visualizing it in my head and kind of taking my hands and deciding, you know, what, what way is it going to go and stepping back and just kind of watching it work. But I, I add to it, I pinch, I snort them, and then I scrape things completely smooth, whether it's a textured area or, like I said, trying to get it smooth. So I'm kind of really interested and kind of intrigued with rock formations. Growing up in Utah, a lot of time down in southern Utah, and so a lot of my pieces, well most all my work is kind of intrigued by kind of the rock shapes. And this last body of work that will be in the show is also kind of torsos, human torso in abstract, kind of in motion the piece itself kind of morphing and, and changing. I like to use the red clay. They don't usually end up being red, but it reminds me also of the Southern Utah Rock. Okay, Bill. So this is designed to open up and because this there's a flame coming out of here when I'm you know firing. This one is a completed firing and it's always fun to open up a kiln and see. It's kind of like Christmas to find out what's in there, <laughs> how it's changed. Yeah once they're fired they're they're really quite strong and you can just lift them out. Most of my pieces are closed off, but I'll have a few that, you know, still have an opening in the top, but they're all hollow. So these are some of the finished pieces. The finishing, I like kind of a, more, a dull surface that the rock would actually look like. And so I kind of use ongobes and slips and stains. The rocks that I stack on top, the idea is as you're hiking and you come across the stacked rocks, the Karens, that people will mark their path, kind of where they've been, and being able to get back, you know, kind of where you're going. So that I liked that idea, and I like to collect rocks. And so I have areas in my pieces where I make the forms in there where I can stack my rocks and stack my carrots. Some of the rocks I have just picked up along the way, and then some of the rocks I make myself. These particular pieces are made and then they're polished, burnished, and smoked in a pit fire. So most of them are human torsos, but I do have a series of cats as well, so that's just a couple of examples of the abstract cats. Been influenced a lot with Henry Moore's work, with the exaggerated human form, the reclining figure, the pits and the hollow parts that he that he had carved into his pieces. The pieces are going to be um, in the gallery, Phillips Gallery, uh, starting June 19th. So um, I hope you can all come and enjoy it. <laughs>